Christian here with Everything Residential and Commercial. We're here in beautiful Tempe, Arizona. As you all may know, it's home of the Sun Devils and they just beat BYU last week. Anyways, we're building a 1,700 square foot home addition. Part of it's a garage with 16 foot ceilings. The other part's gonna be a couple bedrooms and a bathroom. So stay tuned, enjoy the show. So here's what the backyard looks like before we started. Steve and Amber, the homeowners, told us some basic fundamentals of what they're looking for. So we spray painted all the setbacks to figure out the construction area and where we can build. We took that information and I started designing. This is pretty close to scale. You can see our setbacks right there. And I came up with a couple designs. Once we got close to the design we wanted, we sent it over to the architect, got the permits, now we can build. Here's a little mini excavator that we're using to dig out all the footings. Before we actually start digging, we have to game plan. There's me, Nate, and Josh. We're going off this set of blueprints right here that is provided from our structural engineer. And there's a lot of details on here, a lot of details. But once we know what we're doing, we can start digging. All right, we're here with Nathan. He's the stick man. We're using the laser over there. Nate, why don't you come over here and sh explain to us how this uh, stick's working here. All right, so we got a couple depths. Here are our plans. This footer Josh is working on. It's gonna be 18 inches deep, 16 inches wide. So come on over and I'll show you what we're looking for to find the depth and make sure that we're where we need to be. Safety first, give me a second. Don't wanna get hit with the equipment. Why don't you talk about the lines on it real quick? So the lines we have here is we set up a laser there in the corner and then we found our grade point. So now what's gonna happen is to get to our 18 inches for our footer, we then marked 18 inches from our grade point. So now when I stick this here plumb bob stick into the ground, it's gonna show us that, hey, we're at 18 inches and we're gonna go just a little bit over so that we know we're good. Savage here, out here at the big job in Tempe, uh, the big project that Christian's running out here. Just wanted to come out and see everybody and say hi. Just remember, this is No Shave November, and all the real men will follow that rule. And remember, everybody's feeling a lot better from last week. Savage out. Well, I'll tell you one thing. It's been a couple days, and uh, it's actually been 28 years. <laughs> yeah. And this is how much I got so far right here. 28 yeah, he, years. Yeah, he's had nine days to grow that out. Look how good that <laughs> nine is, Nine days, man. I'm did lacking. You, did you put the mascara on the mustache this time? <laughs> yeah. Savage out. Okay, you can see right here. So this whole wall in front of me is a WF-1. See right there, WF-1. So what that means is we come over here to our schedule and it notes that a WF-1 is 18 inches deep and 16 inches wide. And it gives us uh, the type of reinforcement inside of it. So it's just number two number four is longitudinal. It's pretty simple. So that's on this wall. And we're gonna go wall to wall and I'm gonna help dig it out a little bit if we need to, just to get our footers in place, do the hard digging, and then we'll get shovels to like hand dig the rest of it. So when we started excavating, we were off by <clears throat> six to seven inches, I think on two walls. We got those corrected, dug it all out, got our forms 100% ready to go for our plumbers to be here. So this is right where our plumbing Here's our bathroom right here. So this is where all the plumbing is going to go. We're measuring off that wall 15 foot 9, hooking it over there. Um, and then so you can see they're going to turn right here for the plumbing. Probably going to turn down that way for the water heater and all the plumbing in the wall in the garage. And then for the RV outlet. So they'll probably go like that and then turn in this way like this. And there's our connection right there. 
So our plumbers did a great job. We passed inspection with the breeze. I've always been a big ABS guy, but you know, I was somewhat closed minded and my plumbers informed me that they think PVC is superior. So I was like, rock and roll with it. But once we passed inspection, they got the boys out there and they backfilled everything. As they're backfilling, they're hosing it down for dust control and to keep it moist. But once they got done backfilling everything, then it's our turn to come in and get it ready for concrete. So what we do is we get a jumping jack and a plate compactor and compact the native soil. Once it's compacted, we bring an ABC rock, pull some string lines and also compact that. Lots and lots of compaction. So we have a hard surface for our concrete to sit on. ABC is great. It, they use it for roads and all different types of stuff and it's what it calls for the blueprints. But after the ABC, I like putting a fine layer of quarter minus on top to make it perfectly smooth because sometimes you can get humps with the ABC. Once all that is done, we go around and we correct all our form work because by this time it's been a couple weeks. So we use a laser and string and get our forms exactly where they need to be because they've probably dropped quarter inch, half inch. Once that's good to go, it's time for the vapor barrier. Now this vapor barrier is 15 mil plastic and I thought you could get it at Home Depot but they only go up to like four or five mil. So we got this vapor barrier, it's about six to $700 I wanna say, and we got the Stiga or Siga tape, taped it all up, then we started putting rebar in. Now none of the rebar is actually needed on the slab. The only rebar that needs to go places is inside the footing, but I wanted to put the extra rebar in the slab to just reinforce it a little bit more. Using a large vibrator is extremely important, especially when pouring foundations. You have to get the vibrator down to the bottom as there's a lot of tension between the air bubbles and the concrete. So by getting down there and vibrating it, you're releasing all that tension and you're creating it so you have a solid foundation at the bottom. This mix is a 3000 PSI, four and a half inch slump. I'm having our pump guy go around the outside and pour in the footers first so it can set up. If you could see those two by fours running across the slab right there, that is my contraption I'm using as a screed board form. So I can screed the entire thing by myself, as you can see right here. By doing so, I can do it by myself and it becomes perfectly flat and all the manpower can go into pulling and pushing concrete. Hey, candy camera. How you feel about this pour? Hola, no hablo inglés. Oh, that's right. He's from the Dominican Republic. We picked him up. I think he might get deported soon. Concrete pour is going good today. Uh, we got everyone out here. Nice, bright, and early. I think it was three trucks. So, uh, hope you enjoy the footage and wait till you see the final masterpiece. Master P! What do we got going on over here? What are you guys doing? Well, I'm doing all the manual labor, but these guys are fluffing something. I'm not sure. Yeah, we got it easy. What are you guys up to over here? Me and Cody are like cleaning up. This will be a masterpiece by tomorrow at five. Why are you guys cleaning this up? Get the tractor in. We're going to put the dirt around here, level it out, flowing away from the foundation. So right now, let's get all the trash lined up, all the tools picked up. All right, what are you doing over here, Josh? We're just laying in the mud, you know what I mean? <laughs> Still a little, little concrete work, dude. This is like making a cake. Making a cake. It's less gay, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so the homeowner hasn't decided where he wants the door. So we put our bolts on center per the structural detail, and we're just gonna edge a big part of this. We know a door is going right in between the, over there, so we're gonna edge over there, and that's pretty much the only edging we need.
Okay, looking at the slab right now, as you can see, it looks really good. Are you ready to go to bed? It's been a long day, boys and girls. It's been a long day. Looks good, nobody really cares about the footprints. It's all gonna get covered up. But now we're gonna snap a bunch of lines so we can cut in the morning. There's a few people in the company that call me lazy, but then I raised a kid, and you should have seen this pigsty yesterday, but now the lazy boy went ahead and got it all deluxe out here. This is a nice little company van. That's exactly how I left it for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs>